people uh, around home. I mean, they played baseball, football, that kind of stuff. I was junior rodeo and high school rodeo and stuff like that. All through high school, I was always a little small kid. I graduated high school, weighed 145 pounds. I mean, I was a little bitty guy. And then in 2013, I, uh, I went out and I qualified for Rodeo Houston. And so me and my dad go over there. My dad was hazing for me. It was by far the biggest stage I had ever been on. And I wound up, I won my series, which was an awesome accomplishment. I mean, I remember my dad, I thought was the happiest person in the world, just super proud, it was great. And uh, we left there and went to Austin, Texas. I made the short round at Austin, Texas, right there all the same weekend. Come back to Houston, I made the final four and I got back home the very next day and I had more money in my bank account than I've ever had. And I can still remember my dad walking into the house and said, hey boys, don't you have horses to go shoot today? I said, well, Daddy, I said, I got enough money right now. I'm entered in rodeos for the next two weeks. I said, we're going to see how that goes for a little while. And I never got under another horse's shoe. I've been out on the road ever since. Being a cowboy is, I mean, a big, big pride for me. I mean, it's rodeo cowboys in general. I mean, we stick behind each other more than any other sports. I can't speak for every event, but I mean, I know down at the bulldogging into the arena, if the, any of the bulldoggers get a bad call or something like that, there, there's always everybody there to help them work it out. Everybody's behind everyone. I mean, I, uh, Roy Duvall said it the best. He said that whenever he was going to rodeos and stuff, he would go and help out everybody that he could. Because at the end of the year, they give a buckle that says world champion. He said, how good does that make you feel if you're the world champion and you helped everyone else around you to be the best that they can be and you still come out on top? In our group, I know we always joke about it. you'd rather be lucky than good. I mean, I, I made a run yesterday morning in Lovington. It's no way, shape, or form the way that you would design it in your head or to visualize your run. I barely caught the steer, and luckily he was a good steer, and I caught him right at the right time, and I wound up being four seconds flat on him. But, I mean, it was it was an extremely lucky run. I mean, it was definitely pulling a rabbit out of a hat on that one. Whereas everybody will always sit back and laugh at you. Oh, come on, you're lucky, golly, I can't believe that. Well, I'd rather be lucky than good. Talent can only get you so far. You gotta have a little bit of luck on your side. I love the high stakes pressure, pressure situations. I always tell my wife, you know, whenever there's a rodeo out there where you just need to go be six seconds flat and you can get a check, I always tell her that's so much harder than if they back you in a corner and say you gotta be 3'8 to get a check on this year. I love it whenever you whenever you put the pressure on me. That's why, I, I mean, I love the national finals, those go rounds, whenever somebody ahead of me goes fast, just to have that pressure sit on you, you know, I mean, it's what the biggest round you can run out of the year. I mean, the stakes are high and you gotta go fast and I love those pressure situations.